Hello, and welcome to Biker Bushcraft. I want to thank all of you for joining me in this video, and I especially want to thank all of you who've been following me and have stuck with my channel during my brief hiatus. Been doing a lot of recovering, and I'm just about to get out there and camp. I've been riding for quite a few months, and now I'm feeling stable enough on my feet that I can get out and do some camping. In this video, I'm going to focus on foods that don't require refrigeration and just some basic ideas and how and where I get food as I'm on the road. I don't always shop for food before I go on a trip. Sometimes I take off and when I get close to my destination, I'll stop or I'll look for things along the way. One of my favorite food sources when I'm on the road are produce stands. I find them virtually everywhere, occasionally a farmer's market or something like that, depending on the day of the week and the location. But generally, small fruit stands, produce stands have a really good selection. Going through this particular produce stand, you can see there's everything from citrus to greens, you name it. There's even dehydrated fruit, which is a great snack on the road. Most of the time though, I'm looking for greens, things that keep well, travel well, or easy to prepare. I have an example of some of these here. Citrus potatoes are awesome on the road. I really recommend them. There's a lot of things you can do with them. Uh, obviously throw them in the fire and bake them, cut them up, make a breakfast out of them. Very versatile. Green bell peppers travel really well, easy to prepare. They're good for all sorts of things. And there's a recipe I've got coming up. I'm going to try something experimental, but uh, it'll require green bell pepper. Onions, got to have onions. Almost everything uses onions. And apples. And as uh, all of you are aware, it's one of my favorite desserts. But I also use them for snacks during the day. There's a lot of things you can do with apples. Asparagus. I found that it actually does travel well. Sometimes it's inexpensive. It depends on where you go, but for a buck or a buck and a half, you can get a bunch of asparagus and uh, that makes a, a great green. It tastes pretty good and it cooks really easy. Another item that I've found is fantastic on the road, easy to pick up along the way, eggs. I've shown you in an earlier video some ways to preserve eggs, to carry them with you. Eggs that are fresh, that have never been refrigerated, will keep for some time without being refrigerated. And so look for signs on the side of the road, fresh eggs for sale, pick up a couple of eggs, throw them in your pack, and they, they're great for all kinds of things. Of course cooking breakfast on a rock being one of them. I always like to bring bread, a uh, nice loaf of uh, sourdough, all kinds of stuff you can do with it. It makes for a quick snack, an easy lunch, you make toast in the morning, any number of things you can do. And French bread's cheap. It's one of those things you can just tear off a piece and eat it if you want, or you can make it as part of a meal. You can use some of the items and make a sandwich. Very versatile, not very expensive. This was, I think, a $2 loaf of bread. If you're really ambitious, you can make your own. I don't. You'll also notice I have a pineapple. It's kind of big and bulky, not the greatest thing to carry as road food, but I wanted to try a recipe with some pineapple, so I grabbed one, and they're pretty tough. You get one that smells right and I'm no expert on pineapples but this one smells pretty right. You'll notice I have a bag of split pea. You can make split pea soup on the road really easy. It doesn't take a whole lot of ingredients and if you've got a fire going and just want to let it sit there and run uh, you can cook this all day and come up with something really nice to snack on at night, have for lunch. Obviously, this bag makes a whole lot more than one person's going to eat in a sitting, but they're cheap and easy road food. 
You can also get beans and other similar dried things that you can make soups out of on the road. And we'll be exploring that in later videos. You'll notice I've got some dried goods as well. Uh, peanut butter, and I'll go into that in a minute. Have some tomato paste. You can get these in really small cans. It comes in handy for certain recipes, and I'm gonna make a recipe that will require that. Olives, also I find that you can get in a small can. Easy to carry, throw it anywhere in the saddlebags. There's a lot you can do with that. Butter. I usually take a stick of butter along with me. I recommend butter, not margarine. The taste of butter works better with some of the recipes I like to play around with. One other item I get at the produce stand, celery. Goes along with my peanut butter, one of my favorite snacks when I'm just sitting around waiting for food or sitting around reading, but it's a nice snack. It's quick, it's easy, it's actually not bad for you. I'm sure pretty much everybody's tried this, but if you hadn't, peanut butter and celery is awesome. Now for meat. So I recommend going to the meat counter. And the reason I recommend going to the meat counter to get your meat, whether it's in a grocery store or a butcher shop, you don't have plastic and styrofoam to get rid of. If you go to the meat counter, you're gonna get meat that's wrapped in paper. Throw it in the fire, burn it up, you're done. You also have a lot more choices, better cuts of meat. You don't have to get a great big piece of meat for one person. You can have them cut off the piece that you need and that gives you a lot more options. If you're gonna bring meat, don't expect it to last more than 24 hours even with ice. You can, but if you're out there riding, especially if you're somewhere where it's warm, if you're in the desert, you're really pushing your luck and you don't want meat to go bad. So if you have ice and you have fresh meat, 24 hours, maybe two dinners. If you want to keep meat longer, let's say you're going to go for two, maybe three nights, you have a couple of options. One is get your meat in advance and freeze it. Frozen meat will keep overnight at least before it thaws and that gives you another 24 hours beyond that sitting on ice of course. Having the cooler you have that option. One other thing about keeping ice in your cooler, I prefer ice because as I run out of things that I need to keep cold I can put it in drinks and you know sometimes it's nice to have a few ice cubes in your drink. Not all meat has to be refrigerated. And I've talked about a couple of options in earlier videos. One of them is salami. I happen to get this package of cheese and salami to make something specific. In this case, it's, it'll keep, I've already got ice for the meat, so this should be refrigerated. Quite a number of cheeses do not need to be refrigerated. Hard cheeses, I recommend those. In this case, the package was exactly what I needed for what I want to make. Another meat that doesn't need to be refrigerated is pork belly. It's cured, it'll keep for a while without refrigeration, and there's a lot of things you can do with it. A lot of different recipes, breakfast recipes. I've used it in a couple of different recipes I've done in previous videos. I slice it and it's just like bacon. So there's lots you can do with this. So this is a really good option for meat on the road. There's a few other items I don't have out here. Tortillas. Tortillas are very versatile. You can make a lot of things with them. I've got a recipe I'm going to be making with tortillas and this and this and this and this and there's your hint. Um, but tortillas are really good to take along as a road food. They're easy to get just about anywhere, grocery store, it costs you a couple of bucks for a pack of them. Citrus, incidentally, this is from my own tree. When you're on the road, a lot of times you can find citrus trees, and I don't mean somebody's 
field, I mean, a tree in front of a house, something like that, usually get permission to pick some fruit. If you see fruit going to the ground, usually the owners are more than happy to let you take a few. So citrus is pretty easy to find a lot of places when you're on the road. So there's a glimpse into how I plan food along the road. What I find is you can eat healthy and still eat cheap, still keep it on a budget. Produce stands are just about the cheapest place to buy food. You go in there and spend $10 and you've got three days worth of food. Butcher shops, places like that, you can find decent meat, really decent meat, fairly inexpensive. And I should mention a few foods that I found aren't good road foods. Bananas. I like bananas in the morning. Bananas travel terribly. You won't get a day out of them. Tomatoes are you know, kind of iffy. I've had tomatoes get pretty bruised up, but they're good in so many things. I try to take tomatoes when I've got the recipe that calls for it, and I don't worry too much about it. But you do need to take a little bit more care when you're packing tomatoes. Uh, things that are easily damaged by heat. I don't mean regular refrigerated items, but things that can melt, things that don't do well. If you're going out in the desert, um, you want to be very careful what kind of foods you're putting in the saddlebags. So there it is, an example of the road foods I look at. I don't typically stop at truck stops or 7-Elevens to get my food, and I don't really like fast food on the road. I prefer to make my own food. And here's some ways to do it inexpensively, eat well. And as anybody who's been watching my videos can tell you, I do eat well. I want to thank all of you for watching, and I really want to thank everybody who's stuck by me, and I hope you, I hope you continue to enjoy the channel. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And I'll see you on the next one.